To zdropiło dwie godziny temu. O, dawaj, stary. Akurat z Piotkiem o tym gadałem. Mega ciekawy jestem. Siema, widzowy dzień dobry, pozdro. Potężna lutologiczna jest na weekendzik wlatuje. Dzięki Synerix za 32 miesiąc. Patrz, nocy to są. Greetings, travelers. Oh, I'm Judd Kobler, game director for Last Epoch, and I'm thrilled to announce that Last Epoch's first post-launch cycle, Harbingers of Ruin, cycle 1.1, is just around the corner. Arriving on We're very excited to share. Mi się wydaje, że oni pokażą środkowego, potężnego palca Blizzardowi, jak powinno się robić pierwszy sezon. Bo Diablo 1, Di Diablo 1. Diablo 4 też miał bardzo opóźniony pierwszy sezon, ale Last Epoch też ma dość mocno, nie? All of the awesome new content that we've been working on. Let's dive in for a sneak peek at everything coming your way. In Cycle 1.1, you'll be facing off against our newest pinnacle boss, Abroth, the Herald of Oblivion, and his Legion of Harbingers. Abroth is a fearsome foe who has selected his strongest legionnaires to hunt down. Hey, mi się bardzo finalnie podoba w lasi pokus rzut kamery. On jest bardzo izometryczny. On nie jest od góry tak mocny, tylko on jest aż w w ręce przeciwnie bardzo mocno od boku. Terrorist champions and give them a choice. Ale mega dobrze to wygląda. Either join his side and dedicate themselves to Orbis or perish. While exploring and fighting your way through Aterra, you will frequently encounter these fallen warriors that have been defeated by the Harbingers and tainted by corruption, waiting patiently to exact a revenge on other travelers. When interacting with these remains, choices will be given to acquire their previously equipped items, but the vengeful void will cause the remains to animate and attack. This forms the Nemesis system, or by clicking on a Nemesis, which appears as swirling pieces of armor above a slain warrior, brings up a menu where you can see four items that are obtainable. You're given three options. One, you can banish the Nemesis entirely, so the next one you encounter has brand new items. Two, you can challenge the Nemesis, causing the equipment to coalesce into a powerful foe that drops its displayed items when slain. Or three, you can empower the Nemesis. This will result in it challenging you, but escaping if you were able to defeat it. The next time you find a Nemesis event, it will be more challenging, but the displayed items will have been carried over and upgraded in various ways. This can be done a maximum of two times. Empowering a Nemesis can... Ty, to takie semi-ultimatum, nie? Coś takiego. Że albo odpo odpalasz go w kolejnym wave'ie, albo bierzesz to, co jest, nie? Siema, Peter, elo, ludos. Siema, kostryk, dzień dobry. Kurwa, ty widzieliście? Tam był Legendary Power 4. Ale to jest bardzo ciekawe, jak to wygląda. The egg of the forgotten, which can be replaced by one of your own uniques, as long as it has no legendary potential or weaver's will, allowing you to empower that unique with the system. Oh! To stop the threat of the harbor. Ty, poczekaj, można na inne legendarki nakładać weaver's will albo tego legendary power, bo tam tak. Weaver's will, allowing you to empower that unique with the system. Czyli nagle każda legendarka z dowu nie, no oni totalnie kminią itemizację, nie rozumieją na czym polega zbieranie lutu. Tutaj stary każda legendarka w takim razie, która jest podobna do twojej, no nie, każdy duplikat ma jakąś wartość nadal, bo szukasz tych nemesisów, nie, i starasz się na nich wrzucać weaver's will i levelować tego weaver's will, bo potencjalnie może stworzyć lepsze Okay, once ten different Harbingers are vanquished, you can spend a Harbinger Eye you've collected to enter the place where travelers are corrupted into Harbingers, the Altar of Oblivion. 
This is where you will challenge the Pinnacle boss, Abroth. To help tackle these challenging new threats, and because we've tested it and it's just way fun to use, we're introducing a new evade or dodge roll mechanic. While evade doesn't Dude. offer immunity frames or serve as a traversal skill, it's a crucial part of your survival toolkit with two charges available from level one. Unlike other skills, evade is isn't swappable and lacks a skill tree, but its cooldown recovery speed increases as your character levels up. Furthermore, nie, evade can be enhanced by various apps and even unique items that dramatically modify its functionality. Having evade will allow us to design boss fights knowing that all players have a way to traverse out of harm's way quickly without having to choose to take a more powerful traversal ability on their action bar. 1.1 brings the most extensive of balance updates of any patch ever, unlocking many exciting new build opportunities. We've updated skills, passives, and mechanics and can't wait to see what builds emerge as a result. For example, mana now regenerates while channeling on most channeled abilities, making skills like Warpath and Disintegrate awesome to build around. The Mage's Disintegrate skill tree has been updated and can now gain multiple stages of destruction. Kurwa, to movement, Minions are now tankier. Super wygląda, the Sentinel's Shield Bash ability has received extensive updates. The Spellblade Mastery now has more access to Critical Strike. The Sorcerer has even more incentive to build high mana. Shaman and Forge Guard have received extensive updates to be more powerful and interesting. The Primalist Avalanche ability is no longer a channeled skill by default and can do things like proc Earthquake and Upheaval. And the Rogue's Multishot has been buffed when used directly, alongside much more. See the patch notes for a full list of updates. And of course, with new and challenging content and massive balance updates, we're introducing a large swath of awesome new uniques to hunt. For example, the Nihilus Amulet, last epoch's first ever unique to have dwa do wszystkich skilli. Have negative to positive roll ranges. O kurde, patch ma dwa do wszystkich skilli, ale może mieć tak. Armor może być na minus albo na plus. All the rest na minus albo, ale fine item. This large variance means that finding a well-rolled one will result in you obtaining a very powerful item. The Nihilus Amulet is extremely versatile and can be used in many builds. Świetny, no? Meet the Monument of Protection. This Sentinel Shield counts as a one-handed axe and can be equipped with another shield, adding significant offense to shield-based skills and Ty strong patrz, additional defenses. Shield. And the new Black Blade of Chaos. This powerful in-game two-hander changes the Blade Dancer's lethal mirage into a skill that can be used much more frequently, providing no, a potent and an item that skill. Gaging new playstyle. Uniques coming with patch 1.1. Hey, gaging new playstyle. There are 30 uniques coming with patch 1.1, so happy hunting. Let's talk about some of the existing Kurwa, system changes coming with patch 1.1. First off, we've added two new ranks to both Circle of Fortune and Merchant Skilled Factions. Time it takes to reach the highest ranks. We've also revised co, co, co? factions and reduced the time it takes to reach the highest okay, ranks. Czyli we've also revised their rank rewards, and there's now smoother progression in the items to access with Merchant Skilled, and we've provided Circle of Fortune with ranks to receive more boss loot experimental item affixes, and the final rank now completes the prophecy twice instead of just duplicating the reward itself. We're also working towards improving the Merchant Guild Bazaar search feature and plan to release those updates during the 1.1 patch as soon as possible. We're excited to announce that we're adding level ladders alongside arena ladders, which can be accessed both in-game and on the official Last Epoch Ladery. website this patch. To we're also adding timestamps on the arena ladder entries so that players are able to tell when an Actually, entry level on the arena ladder, okay. We've replaced boss dynamic damage reduction with no, a new boss support system, which solves a number of issues. This new system clearly represents boss's true health, makes health leech reliable, ensures players' damage output meets expectations, and there is no longer downsides to higher DPS builds. We have a few changes coming to the monolith of fate. Eba wizowie robi challenge, wbijam na pierwszym streamie, kurwa. Setne level i chuj. First, echoes now more consistently contain swarming and rare enemies to ensure... Ja ostatnio jedną noc spałem, nie? Tak mi się wydaje. Wróciłem i zajebałem 24H, a tak, by były problemy z serwerami. No ja chyba wbijam w jeden stream dwusetny. They're sufficiently populated and rewarding. We've heard your feedback... Zerwili książki na expo na molitach i więcej expo Potrzebny ostatni poziom o kurwa, czyli będzie ciężej. Non-empowered timelines on alts is too time consuming. In 1.1, you will be able to find the new glyph of envy, which siphons stability from your items to add to your timelines. 
The stability granted to uncompleted, non-empowered timelines is very high, allowing you to quickly progress through the unempowered monolith on all characters. We've also made some changes to the Gaze of Orbis mechanic found in empowered monoliths, which previously could be overly punishing. Not only were there diminishing returns at higher amounts of gaze, you also lost all of it if you died to a Shade of Orbis. In 1.1, every stack of Gaze of Orbis always gives 12 corruption, but you can only use 4 at once, the rest carrying over to your next Echo Web. Additionally, when you die to a Shade of Orbis, you now only lose a single stack. Also, in parties, everyone who has enough stability to get blessing and boss specific rewards is also given one Gaze of Orbis, making it easier for multiple people to progress corruption together in a party. Next, let's dive into the massive amount of quality of life additions that we have been working on with our community that you can expect to see in both Cycle and Legacy with the launch of Cycle 1.1, Harbingers of Ruin. In 1.1, all blessings that your character finds and can select from are stored and can be changed out at a vendor for a gold cost. Additionally, all that. characters that share a stash together have the option to equip a minimum value of all found blessings, as long as they have conquered the timeline it is found from. You can even access Grand Blessings, normally found in Empowered Timelines, by just conquering the normal version of the timeline. You can now search Timeline Echoes with text or via icon. We've made some good improvements to the loot filter. For example, you can now filter for le Tymczasem Diablo 4 tak, słyszymy was, będą dodawane loot filtry, nie? Legendary potential and Weaver's will. Ha, to cały czas so upgradeowane loot filter. To jest genialne, ten loot filter jest interface. kurwa genialny. For example, you can have one condition to only show boots with an exalted movement speed prefix and a second condition to only show those also... Wyobraźcie also sobie, że typy, które pracują nad tym Lassie Pokem mieliby, mieliby budżet. Diablo 4. Gdzieś było jakieś obliczenie na reddicie, nie? Że Las Ipok posiada 1% budżetu Blizzarda, nie? Jakieś takie absurdalne to było. And loot filter rules now have numbers and we've added an option to show those rule numbers in brackets next to items on the ground to show which loot filter rule is applying to the item. Nawet chyba mniej Great było, for troubleshooting your filter and deepening your understanding of how the loot works. We've added two different variations of always displaying your endurance threshold on your health bar that can be changed in the gameplay settings. We're thrilled to be bringing you all of this and much more, like visual updates, client performance improvements, tons of bug fixes, network gameplay improvements, and plenty others with our first major post-launch patch. Check out the patch notes for. A ten ziomek dobrze, on wygląda jak taki koleś z kolegiu z USA, w którym byś zajebał stary piwo. <laughs> piwo z rury, kurwa, który by ci wlał do gardła drugi kumpel. <laughs> full details and we'll see you in last eve <laughs> on patch 1.1 harbingers of ruin on july 9th that's a savage kurde mogę się doczekać a to już niedługo nie to już na dniach widzowie to za 4 dni no to będzie kurwa świetne stary to będzie świetne